Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from GreenSock, and today I want to walk you through how relative HSL color tweening works in GSAP. All right, what we have here is a little demo that's going to show you how we can now tween the hue, saturation, or brightness of a color independently and relative to an item's normal color. So I'm just going to click here to start this demo, and you're going to see that we're running through this color wheel on the hue circle over here. The saturation circle is going from desaturated to fully saturated, or it's a grayscale tween, if you will. And on the right, our brightness tween is going from full black to full color, all right? Um, as the hue is rotating, you'll see we did a little playful thing with our logo here. Super simple to do. When you roll over any one of these items, you can take a look at how the relative HSL syntax looks. So for hue, you will see that for the hue value, we're doing plus equals 360. And what that's going to do is allow us to just spin around the color wheel. For the saturation and lightness, we have plus equals 0% for both of them. And that just means that those values will not change during this tween. And so for saturation, you're going to have something similar. Here, we're bringing the saturation level down to an absolute value of 0%, and we're not touching the hue or the lightness. And brightness, you can imagine, is going to be exactly the same syntax, where the brightness is going down to 0, and we're doing no change on the hue or saturation. So that's really all you need to know, but I'm going to walk you through a demo that shows you how to build this stuff from the ground up, and I'm also going to show you how to do a cool little roller effect so that you can have a bunch of items, and whenever you roll over them, they get just a little bit darker or a little bit lighter with a very small amount of code. All right, folks, to walk you through a little uh, hands-on real-world exercise here with HSL color tweening, I have this very simple demo set up. Um, we have three circles, and inside each circle is some text that is the same color as the background color, okay? So we're just going to do some HSL relative tweens on these background circles, um, and then show you how to make it interactive, all right? So we'll walk through all the different features, and we'll have some fun. So right now, I have a very basic tween set up here, where we're just changing the background color to a single HSL value for all three circles, okay? And we've supported HSL color tweening for quite a while. This is nothing new. So when we run this animation here, you'll see that all three circles tween to the same pink color as defined via these hue, saturation, and lightness, all right? But the idea here is that we're going to show you how to isolate the hue, saturation, and lightness uh, for some pretty cool effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, you know what, maybe I want all three of these circles here to spin around the color wheel, all right? So for the hue, I'm going to use this notation of plus equals 360. For the saturation, I'm going to say plus equals zero. That means that the saturation will not change at all. And we're going to do the same thing for the lightness, okay? When I hit run, we start off with our blue, green, and red, and you'll see that all the background colors loop pretty quickly through the hue color wheel and end back at their normal values, okay? So that's pretty cool. If I want to maybe desaturate each one of these circles, all right, bring it down to like grayscale, I'm going to do plus equals zero on the hue, and I'm going to say we're going to tween the saturation of all of these elements to 0%, and leave the lightness alone. And when I hit run, here you'll see that over the course of two seconds, uh, we completely desaturate the background colors of those circles. Pretty cool, right? Um, and then for the lightness, um, suppose we want to make each one of these things just a little bit darker. I would do something like minus equals 20% perhaps. When I hit run, you'll see something a little bit odd because I made a mistake. So. This should be plus equals for the saturation, and then now let's hit run again, and aha, I've saved myself. All right, so there we go. Each three of the backgrounds got a little bit darker, thus revealing the text inside of them. So what I'm going to do next is show you how to make these things interactive. So we can use just a very little bit of code so that when you roll over each item, its background maybe gets a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, or maybe you want to do a hue shift. All right, so what I'm going to do is fly through this by getting rid of that tween there. I'm going to paste in just a little bit of basic jQuery code. So here I'm selecting every item with a class of circle and we're doing an each method on that. So basically for every circle that we find we're going to be calling a specific function. 
And inside of that function, I'm going to declare that this dot animation is going to say whichever DOM element we're working on right now, we're going to give it an animation, which is going to be whatever this code generates. Okay, so um, each DOM element that has a class of circle is going to have an animation property on it that refers to this tween that does something exactly like what I just showed you. So let me hit run and you're going to see now that each circle is going to fade out to the, this background color. And actually technically the target of this tween should be this, okay? So basically each circle fades, I'm sorry, darkens its own background color. And for this mouse interaction effect, I'm going to make sure that this tween is paused by default. And now I'm going to rely on jQuery's hover function to tell that tween to either play or reverse. So I'm just going to paste in a little bit of jQuery code where we say this dot hover and we're going to define two functions. When we mouse over, we're going to do one thing and when we mouse off, we're going to do something else. I'm going to say this dot animation dot play. And then the other function we're going to be toggling back and forth between on mouse over and mouse leave. We're going to say this dot animation dot reverse. Going to hit run. So we start off. Everything's paused. All right. When I roll over this circle, it says play my tween that takes my background color and makes it a little bit darker. When I roll off, it says, let's reverse that tween. Same thing for here, and same thing for red. Now, it's a little bit painfully slow, so I'll make one little change and make that 0 0.3 seconds. I'm going to hit Run, and there you are. I didn't have to go in and figure out what the exact hex color is for that darker blue or darker green or darker red. I'm just saying make each background a little bit darker every time I roll over. Um, I could also do like some funky hue shifts if I wanted to. Maybe I say plus equals 120 on the hue and we'll leave it at plus equals 0% on the lightness. I'm going to hit run and then you get something like this. All right. Some of you designers are probably screaming and gouging your eyes out right now, but I'm just showing you what's possible. You must use these things wisely. So I leave it up to you to mess around with these numbers a little bit. Maybe we'll go to a hue shift of 60 and maybe we will bring the lightness up by 10%. I have no idea how that will look, but we can just play, whoa, there we go. I think I was rolling over while my page was still refreshing. So this is another one that you wouldn't want to use. All right. But the idea is that it's very simple to set up. And there's a lot of applications where you're going to want to do these sort of relative hue, saturation, or lightness tweens, okay? So again, play around with it, have fun, make sure you got the latest version of GSAP so that you have access to this relative HSL tweening. Now I've been using it in background color. It can also work with normal color um, or any HSL string value inside of any string, all right? So uh, you can do box shadow, text shadow, uh, and other CSS colors as well. So that's it, folks. I'll see you in the forums. Happy tweening.